gonna go around the bin, around the bin, around the bin. still intact. And the two hind legs with a hoof. You see a shoulder blade. These are youngsters. There's still one eating on something. Morning, cat. Birds in the background are the buffalo weavers at their nests. Oh, there's another weaver that doesn't use grasses, uses twigs, uses the nest most of the year. All year. Somebody wants to come here. You say this is space for two vehicles. Don't count me anymore. You know about the uh, Yingwe? <coughs> yeah, and it's yeah. Safari don't come. Before I went on leave, we were in exactly the same place with Tingana. The male leopard. Full bellied cat. So, water bucks? It could be, I suppose. Can't really tell, but just at the glimpse that I had. Not a very big. Directly behind this, this cat. 
left to try. There's no way to get in there. There are a lot of dead trees here, so we can't really get in. But it, she is, she's on the skull, so she looks like it's the back of the skull, probably where the atlas vertebra is, where the spinal column comes out of the skull. Because of the positioning of the horns, it looked like it could be a young kudu bull. But I might be wrong, might have been a nyala. I still can't see it too well. They're right in front of the lodge. I mean, it's not very, not very far at all. In fact, they're going to be able to see these cats from their breakfast table. Oh, she's creeping closer. They're going to probably get a little bit of a snarl, maybe. Putting her nose very close. Ah, it's a big kudu. It's quite a big kudu. I only see one horn though. So that's interesting. This one crept in almost as though she knew the other lioness was finishing on the skull. But definitely sort of subordinate, waiting for her to move off. If only I could be just a few inches forward, but I've got my wheel right against the, the fallen tree. Looks like it was a fairly large kudu bull. Now, not much of a skull by the looks of things. bird coming overhead. I've definitely seen the remains on the ground. Sub-adult battalier that came in, not getting its colours. It would be about a seven-year-old battalier, six, seven-year-old. They only get that much. Just, just getting its red legs now, its adult colours. Okay, well, I'm going to try and move a little bit at an angle. Now that the others have gone and this female is concentrating on her piece of skull. Only the, the top of the skull, most of the skull is... And, well...
legs are still a little bit orange, and its coat is still a bit brown, a little bit scruffy. Not quite adult colours yet. Not quite full adult colours. I might actually come down to those bits of the carcass. They're good. Not the best thing I can do for now. Yeah. But, uh, strange enough, most of that skull is. Most of that skull has actually been eaten. It smells like a butchery. Yeah. It is a butchery. I just butchered a kudu. A single kudu wouldn't go very far with all of these cats, but they all seem to have fed somewhat, but it must have been quite a fight, you know, when cats, especially if they're hungry, this number of cats catch something, it's a, it's a free-for-all. Each one's got to get a, a, a its jaw clamped on some part of it, and unfortunately, even the size of a kudu wouldn't last very long. And there will also be a lot of snapping and snarling and swiping at each other with their paws, claws out. sort of angle with all the quarry bush and fallen bush willow you wouldn't really say that there's a dozen or a dozen cats sprawled out it'd be quite easy to miss hoping everything's fine with broadcast because I can't get hold of Nikki
if, if this was a motorbike, would we smell a powerful smell? Yeah, it would be pretty... Although I suppose the stomach contents may be overpowered. Cool. I just got a bush telegraph saying that everything's fine back at FC, so that's good to know. I'm sure they've. I'm sure they're most likely questions coming in, but since I can't get Nikki, she I can't hear her going to be able to answer any of the questions as yet. But we are going to sit here for some time. We can resort to a more slightly different communication system. had a chance to be able to use the horns but in some cases yes in, in fact in many cases could who will try and back themselves off into a bush or something and most definitely defend them try and defend themselves Diana wants to know when it was killed I don't really know Diana but I'm guessing it must have been maybe during the night or very early this morning I we would have to defer to some of the viewers Sure, we could hear from one of the, the lodges, or rather, one of the guides from Safari Lodge from Arethusa. Uh I must have been watching it from the camera. Maybe when daylight came about, it might have been too far to see the infrared. I'm not sure. It would be very interesting to read people's accounts of what they saw on Arethusa camera. Uh, Ellen wanted to know which pride. This is known as the Talala Breakaway. Pride. That's all we have. Yeah, I 
still don't know. I haven't been able to see. I think how many in the Salala breakaway? So. the second time that I'm seeing them. The first time I saw them, there were only, a, I could only see a couple. And then, let's see what happened here. She's, oh, she's put on a thorn. Wanting to come and get a piece of the trophy. The yellow stalk that's landed as well behind us. We're going to get a look at that later. That's got nothing to do with the carcass. I haven't seen the better they're still in the tree. The better there is gone. Just flew away. Has gone. Has left. No one wants to know if there are any youngsters or they're all adults. There are some adults. I can see a young male. Was, he's probably one of the, 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 the sub adults. And just see the back of, well, that's the back of that female. And then here is the back of a young male, just his back, leg, and tail. And you can see why I can tell that he's a young male because. That looks like a female just behind him. I've only familiarized myself with the Talala Breakaway Pride. Um, I guess having not spent time with them, I'm not familiar with them at all. Franklin making a noise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can see about eleven. But they are obscured. So I'm missing maybe one or two. Maybe when we leave, I'll be able to do a better count. So, let's get some info from viewers. If Sil is online or any of the other line people are online. Total number of Talala Pride. What's the breakdown? How many males? How many females? How many young schools? Because of fighting. Oh, yeah. 
Let's just turn around quickly. Then we can have a look at that yellow book store as well. Hippo making waves. Yellow bull stalk gone down to see that chase must have been chasing this one off that's swimming here around the the, the marker. Yeah, I copy. Quite a bit of a commotion. Now hippos are making their way around the little island in front in the middle of the dam. We'll see going past the uh, heron near the yellow bull stalk just to the left of the heron but now others are starting to come unbelievable how fast hippo can move in water but I think most of the fight is over must have been a bit of a dispute over space from Anna Marie in New Jersey about the cats. The lions get into squabbles for the remains of a carcass. Sometimes they do, enemy. Sometimes when there is very little left. In fact, I can't help but say it depends because sometimes on a very big carcass, the squabbles will be there initially uh, when they first make the kill and they're hungry and they all want to get a piece of it no matter how big it is, even if it's a giraffe. So at first there's always a squabble. But as far as the remains are concerned, if it's a very large animal and they've all had their fill, pretty much like now, the only remains there are are the pelvis that we can see now. Still articulated pelvis part of the vertebra, most of the lumbar vertebra and cervical vertebra. Uh, what we're looking at on the left, we're missing on the right. It's finally that one broken a piece off of probably the base of the the, the horns piece of the skull and she's walked up towards the other cat and she, she's definitely carrying it like a trophy it's almost like it's just a of her. she's taunting them get around there when it is a small carcass right now the, the one that was coming in was waiting for its turn at the skull is now chewing around a little bit around the site so we can get a, a cross section of what's going on but this one was waiting her turn so she's now got the, the base of the horn or the base of the horns and a piece of the skull um, they seem to have chewed most of the skull away but you can see it's what makes these different to deer so you can see how much of a part of the skull the horns actually are be waiting their turn to chew on the base of that uh, the top of the skull, the base of the horns. See the, the other one, she looks like finally broke a piece off of and she's now chewing on it. There are some youngsters here, some sub-adults, there's some that look like maybe six, eight months old cubs, if I'm not mistaken. I see them now. now there's been a bit of activity with this female taking a piece and parading it through the pride. Some of them were sitting up and taking notice. A little boy lying there, rolling onto his back. 
he's not even a year, I don't think. He must have sisters too. There are some other youngsters. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus that one back there, eleven. Twelve, maybe. So difficult to get to see all of them. So, now what I suspected was from the back of the skull, which this lioness is now eating, looks like that's the axial vertebra and the cervical vertebra. The vertebra that attaches to the back of the skull. And what looks like could be C2 and 3. get it <laughs> because she's looking at you all over the top of her nose. Very rough tongue, trying to lick the meat off of the bones rather than, as well as trying to get it I suppose with her incisors. little bit back. And Wendy, a little bit back. Yeah. No more gravity. We be okay here. Yeah. Pardon? You okay here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just put oh, the gravity finally working. Do another count now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, maybe thirteen. Uh, seems like the telegraph's not working anymore.
he's had enough. I'm actually going back to this. I'm just going to lie down. I think I better move so we can get another view now because we don't really have much of a view except a tail. <laughs> Not even a twitching tail. Dara is asking if the hippos are most likely going to stay in the water if the lion other than any other reason. Uh, but even if it were night time, no, the hippo would exit the water and go feeding. That There might be a confrontation. Remember, the, the lion are only here one small patch. There are a lot of places for the hippos to go that won't make them cross paths with the cats up later and they will be thirsty. And so it's quite likely that they might be around when the hippo do come out this evening to go grazing. But I don't think the hippo will be too concerned with them. I don't think these, the lion are not going to take on an adult hippo. They might try and make a play for a youngster, but... Well, hippos get very protective over their young. Karen in Holland is saying 
the, the lion are pretty close to the people at the lodge. Is it not dangerous for the people who are staying there? Not really, Corin. Um, the, the lion are not likely to. <laughs> Quite cute, rolling over and hugging itself. As long as the people stay in the lodge, I mean, it's very important that when you are guests in the bush, you don't go wandering off on your own. It's one of the, I suppose, a very uh, um, pertinent question given the cats are here and how many times people do wander off from a lodge. Because out of sight, out of mind, they might think that they might think that there's nothing going on because I can't see anything and well you wouldn't see these cats if you were wandering from the from the lodge right now until you stumbled upon them if the lion were to walk through the camp which they can do and which has happened especially I've been in, in camps all over Africa that doesn't that, that haven't had fences they haven't had any uh, means of keeping animals out of camp. It's the whole reason why the camps are there is to be immersed in the wildlife experience. So you have elephant and sometimes even lion in camp. But it's very important that guests get a very, very strict 